In this video, I'm going to talk about the use effect hook in React. In particular, I'm going to look at how we can use use effect in a functional component to mirror the use of component did mount and component will unmount in a class based component. In the same way that use state is sort of the equivalent to working with state in a class based component, the use effect hook is sort of the equivalent of the lifecycle methods in a class based component. Things like component did mount, component did update, and component will unmount. Let's start with a very simple example of use effect so we can learn some of the basics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it resize.jsx because I'm going to show an example soon that tracks the resizing of the window. So as I mentioned, we use these hooks like use effect in a functional component. So we're going to write a functional component. We're going to import react from react and we're going to bring in the use effect hook like so. And we're going to write our functional component. We're going to call it const resize. We'll go ahead and make sure we export it before we forget. And for now, we'll just return a heading that says resize. And we'll bring it into our app.js file and bring the component in here. Let's just go ahead and make sure that we see this appearing in the browser. Okay, there it is, resize. So let's go ahead in this resize file and start using our use effect hook. We write it like so, use effect. And then in the parentheses, we're going to write a callback function. And in here is where we're gonna write whatever functionality we want to occur. So let me give you an example, very simple example. We will just do a console log and we will say mounted. Let's go ahead and look in the browser and there we see in the console the word mounted. So we can see here that once the component mounted, use effect was called and we got the word mounted in the console. So in one way, this use effect is similar to componented mount. However, it's a little bit different because with use effect, we can work with our component did update and component will unmount lifecycle methods as well. And let me explain how that's done. This call to use effect takes a second argument, and that argument is in the form of an array. Because this is an empty array right now, whatever happens inside of this use effect call will only happen after the component mounts. So with that second argument as an empty array, this essentially becomes like component did mount. Now in this video, I'm not going to show component did update, but if you did want this console.log to be called whenever the component did update, you can pass into this array any value you want use effect to respond to when that value is updated. Now in terms of component will unmount, we can get access to that lifecycle method by returning a function from use effect. So we can do something like this. So within this function is where we would cancel any listeners or cancel any set intervals, for example. Now, one of the cool things about use effect in comparison to the lifecycle methods in a class based component is that with use effect, we have access to all these lifecycle methods within the same function. Whereas in a class based component, if we subscribe to a listener, for example, in component did mount, we would have to call a separate function, component will unmount, to unsubscribe to that listener. So we have two different places in our code, two different methods that are concerned with the same thing, but are in two different locations. With use effect, if we wanted to have more than one side effect, for example, we wanted to do some data fetching here, and then let's say we also wanted to do some DOM manipulation, we could just go ahead and create another use effect, and that use effect could encapsulate all of the lifecycle methods that are related to each other. So let's go ahead now and actually create an example using use effect. Let's get rid of this one, and we'll create it brand new. So let's write use effect, create that callback function, and in here, let's say that on component did mount, we're just going to have the document title equal the window dot inner width. And like I said, using this empty array here as the second argument is going to ensure that this is called only on component did mount. So let's go ahead and save, take a look in the browser, and we can see here that we have 2,112. So this is the current width of our window. 
Just to check, let's resize the window, let's make it smaller, and let's refresh the page. And now we get 962. Now setting the document title to the window's inner width is probably not the most practical or common thing you'll be doing, but nevertheless, I think it'll serve to illustrate the concept. So as we can see, when we resize the browser right now, the document title is not updating. And in order to do that, we would need to set up an event listener to the window object. So let's go ahead and do that in our use effect. Let's say window.addEventListener. The first argument will be resize. This is the event we're going to be listening for. And the second argument is going to be the function we want to be called when the window is resized. So let's take this and put it into a function. Let's call it const resize document title. And when that function is called, we're going to assign the document.title to the window.inner width. So now we can take that function and pass it in here as the second argument. So we're going to listen for that resize event, which will happen when we're changing the size of the browser window. And this function will be called. So now let's go to the browser and refresh. And we can see that we don't have the window inner width here in the document title. And that's because we need to actually resize the window in order for that to appear. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we can see here that we get the window inner width reflected in the document.title. And that's because we've subscribed to this event listener here on the window object after the component mounts. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use useEffect to do some cleanup on our component after it unmounts. So in order to do that, in our app component, let's go ahead and create a button which is going to let us toggle between a mounted and an unmounted state. And we'll call that toggle mount, or toggle mounted for now. And let's bring in the use state hook from React. Let's call use state here inside of our functional component. And let's create mounted and toggle mounted. So let's initialize mounted to true. And then when we click on our button, we are going to call toggle mounted. And this is going to flip mounted back and forth from true to false, false to true, and so on. So on our button element, we'll write an on click. And we'll say on click, we're going to call toggle mounted. And we're going to set mounted to be the opposite of whatever it currently is. So if it's true, when we click the button, mounted will become false, and so on. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to use this button to mount and unmount the resize component from the DOM. So that way we can take a look at the cleanup method we're going to return from use effect. So let's say that if mounted is true, then resize will be mounted in the DOM. If mounted is false, resize won't be mounted, or we won't see it appear in the browser. So right now, mounted is true, so we should see resize appear. Let's save it. And there it is. Just to make sure it's working, let's set mounted to false. Once we save, we should see in the browser resize disappear. So essentially resize, the resize component has been unmounted at that point. And then also, since we've set up this button to call toggle mounted on click, we should see resize disappear and appear whenever we click on toggle mounted. And it does. So now that we have that in place, let's go into our resize component. And let's write a cleanup function. This would be similar to component will unmount in a class-based component. And this is how we do it. If we return a function from use effect, like so, we're going to write something here in this function in a second. But basically, whenever this component is unmounted, this function will be called. And let's go ahead and verify that this function is indeed called when the component unmounts. For now, let's just console.log unmounted. So we should see unmounted appear in the console whenever we unmount resize from the DOM. So let's click toggle mounted. And let's take a look in the console. And there you go, unmounted, is the component unmounted. We'll click toggle again. Now it reappears in the DOM. Let's unmount it again. And now we see unmounted has logged to the console two times. Now, what would we actually want to do in here? Well, since we are subscribing to this event listener, resize here, we would want to unsubscribe from that event listener when the component is unmounted. And we want to do this to avoid memory leaks. So we could do it like so. We could say window dot remove event listener. 
And then we give it the event listener we want to remove, which would be resize. And we have to pass it the same function that we did to add event listener, resize document title. But now let's go ahead and verify this. Let's see what would happen if we didn't have this cleanup function here. Let's comment it out for now. Let's go back to the browser window. And since we set up that event listener, when we resize the browser window now, we should see the windows inner width appear here in the document's title. So let's go ahead and do that. And there it is, 973, 907, and so on. If we continue moving the window, we'll see that document title update to the inner width because we've subscribed to that event listener. But now what would happen if we unmounted this resize component? Would we still see this inner width change? Well, let's go ahead and do that. So now resize has unmounted. And if we go ahead and change the window, we still see this updating. And that's because we are still subscribed to that event listener, the resize event listener, even though resize is not mounted or visible in the DOM anymore. And this is how a memory leak would occur. So since resize isn't mounted anymore, we want to avoid this happening. So let's go ahead and uncomment that cleanup function. And let's go back to the browser and try that again. So now let's resize the window. And we do see the document title updating with the window's inner width. But now let's go ahead and unmount resize. And let's see if it updates. You see it's not updating. It's still at 1181, even though we are continuing to resize the window. So you can see that returning this function here within useEffect is the equivalent of component will unmount in a class-based component. So yeah, this was kind of an artificial example I showed here, but hopefully it allowed you to see how useEffect works and how we can achieve the same functionality as component did mount and component will unmount as we have in a class-based component. So if you got something out of this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. See you next time.